Hello, my name is Simon Needham. I'm a professor of gastroenterology and a Wellcome Senior Clinical Research Fellow at the Wellcome Trust Centre for Human Genetics, part of the Nuffield Department of Medicine at the University of Oxford. I'm also the director of the Oxford Centre for Personalised Medicine. My lab is interested in the morphogenic signaling pathways that regulate the intestinal stem cell in health and disease. These pathways have considerable control over cell fate determination and are therapeutic targets of great interest in diseases like colorectal cancer. Despite near universal derangement in colorectal cancer, the WINT pathway has remained very difficult to target therapeutically. Here we report on a single molecular test for stratifying patients in advance of treatment decisions. This work was done as part of the ESCORT Stratification in Colorectal Cancer Consortium led by Tim Morn, and we are grateful for the grant contributions from a number of funding bodies to support this work. It's now my pleasure to introduce the first author of this paper, Dr. Sam Kleeman, to outline the key messages from the work. Hi, my name is Sam Kleeman. I'm a doctor based in the United Kingdom, and I'm delighted to share with you uh, the results of the project uh, at the University of Oxford, uh, which was titled Exploiting Differential Wind Target Gene Expression to Generate a Molecular Biomarker for Colorectal Cancer Stratification. As a brief introduction, the wind signaling pathway is a primary driver of tissue homeostasis in the gastrointestinal tract. Wind signaling agonists are produced by stromal cells at the bottom of the crypt, and ligand secretion requires post-translational modification by an enzyme called porcupine. Secreted wind ligands bind to cell membrane frizzled receptors and inhibit a cytosolic destruction complex, including proteins such as axin and APC. Inhibition of this destruction complex permits accumulation of beta-catenin, the key transcriptional driver of wind signaling. However, Recent work shows that for complete activation of the wind signaling pathway, r spawning ligands must bind to LGR family receptors to inhibit RNF43 and thus disinhibit frizzle receptors. The wind signaling pathway is recurrently mutated in colorectal cancer, with, with mutations seen in pathway components including r spondin RNF43, beta-catenin, and APC. In the case of r spondin these mutations take the form of gain-of-function fusion genes. The first hypothesis of our project is that we could use mutation status to subdivide colorectal tumors. We know that the majority of tumors in colorectal cancer, approximately 80%, occur in downstream proteins such as APC and beta-catenin. These drive constitutive activation of the pathway that is entirely independent to ligand binding to frizzled receptors. We call these tumors ligand independent. In contrast, gain of function mutations in R-spondin and loss of function mutations in RNF43 depend upon wind binding to frizzled receptors and we call these mutations ligand-dependent. As support for this hypothesis, we showed both in internal and publicly available cohorts of polyps and tumours that wind mutations are mutually exclusive, with few occurrences of multiple wind mutations in the same tumour. What's particularly important from a clinical perspective is that ligand-dependent mutations are clinically actionable. We know that wind pathway activation um, depends upon post-translational modification of wind ligands by porcupine, and these tumours, these ligand-dependent tumours, are exquisitely sensitive um, to inhibition of porcupine uh, with a number of porcupine inhibitors that are entering early phase clinical trials. Our aim was therefore to identify a biomarker that could accurately distinguish between ligand-independent and ligand-dependent tumours. We wanted this biomarker to work in a way that was quick, pragmatic and inexpensive, avoiding the need for costly genome-wide DNA and RNA sequencing, which is not likely to be feasible in a clinical setting. Firstly, our comparison between ligand-dependent and independent tumours identified marked enrichment of wind-negative regulators in ligand-independent tumours. As a brief background, like all signaling pathways, there are multiple levels of negative feedback loops within the wind pathway, and examples of how these uh, negative feedback processes are shown in the slide here, with negative regulators such as NOTAM, ABCDD1, and AXIN2 acting in different parts of the wind signaling pathway. Our differential expression analysis in publicly available cohorts of colorectal tumours shows that negative regulators are markedly enriched in ligand-independent versus ligand-dependent tumours, with axon 2 showing a very significant uh, a differential expression between these tumour groups. In fact, axon 2 expression differs so significantly between ligand-dependent and independent tumours that we were able to exploit it as a biomarker for ligand-dependent tumours. In our discovery cohort of 680 tumours, we saw very uh, significant differences in expression that equated to an error under the curve of 0.93, and we, can, we confirmed this in two independent validation cohorts, making up both resection specimens and biopsy tumors with excellent diagnostic performance. 
we can start to propose a novel model of ligand-dependent alterations in colorectal cancer based on our findings. We hypothesize that ligand-dependent alterations, such as R-spawn infusions, for example, will cause activation of the wind signaling pathway, which is then constrained by proportionate activation of negative regulators, such as axon 2. This creates an understandable selection pressure to repress axon 2, potentially explaining why there is this difference in negative regulators between ligand-independent and dependent tumors. And we've seen some evidence about how this might occur, uh, because we see that axon 2 and other negative regulators are significantly hypermethylated in ligand-dependent tumors. And this makes sense because this would then restore wind signaling activation you know, if the negative regulators are repressed. But we believe we can take this one step further because not only are we thinking about the biology of, of these tumors, but also we can think about a new approach to stratified medicine in colorectal cancer. This is because simply by measuring axon 2, for example, by real-time PCR, we can identify patients that have ligand-dependent biology and then target these patients for these new types of therapies such as porcupine inhibitors. And we hope to bring this forward into clinical trials in the future. Thank you very much for watching.